انا كمان كيف كون حبيبات حب حبيبتات حبيبيس حبيبتات كيف كون حبيبيس حبيباتي Welcome to Noah Den Sanning. Nice to see you guys all again. For you guys who don't know us yet, my name is Paulos Abraha and this is my wonderful wife. Gloria. Today we are gonna record a Q&A. We have received a lot of questions from you, both here on YouTube in our comments, but also through Instagram. But first we want to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't done it. Log in, it takes a couple of seconds. And also if you like this video, press a like, maybe even leave a comment. And we also want to say thank you for all your support, for to all of you who are subscribing and spreading our messages. And we also appreciate all your messages that we are receiving. And uh, we are doing our best to answer all comments. But let's start. Question number one. How did you guys meet? And uh, this is a question that we might have answered in a previous video, but I'm not sure if we've done it in English. Baby, can you tell them how we met? <laughs> where we met <laughs> the first time we met each other was at a nightclub here in stockholm sweden uh, we have mutual friends and we we met at a nightclub that's where we met that's where it started from the nightclub to the church and now we're married another question is how long have you been together and we met at this nightclub for the first time in december 2014 but we started dating during the summer 2015 mm -hmm. so approximately we've been together for almost six years now mm -hmm. and um, yes yeah, so we were together 2015 summer we got engaged in the beginning of 2019 and then we also got married the same year mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no reason to wait so we got married in july and this july we will celebrate two years as a married couple and it has been amazing next question are you christian a lot of you have asked us if we are christian muslims if we are believers orthodox and uh, the answer is yes we're christians and i think even gloria uh, talked about this a couple of years ago mm. that we both come from uh, an orthodox background i've also uh, been uh, to a catholic church since i was a young kid a couple of years ago we ourselves decided to uh, to take a step ourselves uh, in our faith in our walk with the jesus that reading the bible and today we go to a uh, a church together so the answer is yes we are christians and believers of jesus christ next question is where do you live we have noticed that we have a lot of uh, viewers from different countries mm. not only here in sweden but we are from sweden we live in stockholm we are born and raised here and so we are from europe <laughs> <laughs> We are, we are Swedish. I'm born here. You're born here. Gloria, do we speak Arabic and or Tigringa? We speak a little bit. Shweya? Yes, Shweya. But I wouldn't say that I can speak in fluently. I understand everything, and you understand a lot of Tigringa mm. as well. Mm. I think when we get children. I will probably give the most responsibility of teaching them Arabic to my parents because my Arabic is... So do you speak Arabic? Yes or no? Yes. You speak do. Arabic? Yes. Anna, come on. Kif kon habibat? Habibat? Habibis? Habibat? Kifkor Habibis. Habibati. No, I speak a, a, a little of Arabic, but uh, I speak more Tigrinya. I'm a short and tall day. Gen Kab Eritrea. So let's see Tigrinya is same here. Not the Tigrinya Hashem. It's already iconic. Gen Yifetenia. Sebete Kab Syrian Kab Libanonia. Nesakaman Nishte Tigrinya is same here. Mesh Kamelechi. <laughs> Some people are asking us if we can read Tigrinya or Arabic. No. No? I can actually read a little bit of Tigrinya. I went to uh, Tigrinya school, if that's what you can call it, after my normal classes. And uh, so I, I, can, I can read a little bit of Tigrinya. Have we been to Eritrea or Syria? For me, yes, I've been to Syria and Lebanon. I'm actually 
Syria and from Lebanon. I've been to both countries. Have you been to Eritrea? No. Are you planning? Yes. When? Mass. When the pandemic is over, we can start planning trips. And I've also been to Eritrea. I was there the first time when I was a young kid, 93, 94. Last time I was in Eritrea was 2016. And um, I enjoy it. I enjoy it very much. Okay, a question a lot of people have asked us in our YouTube channel is, are, when are we getting a child? Are you pregnant? No? <laughs> <laughs> no. When are we getting a child? I would say between dun, dun, dun. today and two, five years. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere between 2021 to 2026, I will have a child. At least one. In about five years, I will have at least one child. At least. Hopefully two. But we'll see. <laughs> Maybe God will bless us with a twin directly. Okay, next question. What do you guys work with? Should I start? Yeah. I work as a political secretary, but my background is actually IT. I studied computer science in university. I worked for two and a half years within IT. But then I got the opportunity to work as a political secretary and I've done it for the last two years now. It feels great. I learned so much working with politics. It hasn't been something I've, I've done before, I've had an, I had an interest of before, but it actually feels like I'm in the right place. This is what I was made for. I am a student, so I study full time to become a teacher. And I have uh, studied for a year now, so I have three years left. Mm. And I work a little bit extra uh, at my father's restaurant sometimes, but also at a school as a teacher substitute. So that's what I do. What is the best thing about your professions and uh, what difficulties have you uh, f faced? I can start. I just mentioned that I have, I'm studying to become a teacher, but before I started my university studies, I actually worked as an English teacher and what I love the most of being a teacher is that you have such an important role in the students' lives mm. where you can choose to speak life over them. You can encourage them. By being a teacher, you are investing in the society. Mm. You're investing in the next generation. So I love uh, teaching and I love seeing the face of the children that my students when they go from not understanding something to understanding it it's a feeling I can't really explain but it's just it's like yes I did something good yeah. they understood I love that part too but I also love the part where I can be like a motivation in mm. their life and encourage them are there any difficulties of uh, be being a teacher yes there are many difficulties but one that I think about is um, the feeling of wanting to help everybody but you can't you can't help everybody you and a lot of times you feel as if you're not enough but you just have to trust God in the process and believe that he also helps you um, because you want to see every student but it's it's hard to mm. help everyone individually mm. one of the best things of working with politics and a political secretary is that you are able to make a change in the society that you live in for me coming into the politics i've seen also how it inspires others but also how, how I look at uh, the world and our society from a different angle because I come from a different culture, a different background, I have a different childhood from uh, most of the other politics. So I, I love to, to inspire others and also to be able to be a voice for the younger generation in our country. And another difficulty of uh, being in politics was to understand the vocabulary that they use. I had no experience before I jumped in as a political secretary, so I had troubles understanding uh, how things work. It was a new area for me because because I hadn't studied anything to do with political science. But after a while, and um, through my also belief in, in God, I managed to overcome these difficulties. And But of course, new difficulties will arise. Last question for this video is, what would you tell 10-year-old Paulos and 10-year-old Gloria? If I would go back uh, 18 years and talk to 10-year-old Paulos, I would tell him, number one, don't compare yourself to anybody else. And number two, don't let anybody tell you that anything is impossible. 
because everything is possible for you who believe and if you don't believe it God's gonna make it possible through your life and I would also tell him to start reading the Bible I mean being a 10 year old you know how to read a book and I would encourage him to read a Bible even though there are other things that 10 year olds likes to do but the wisdom that we have received from the Bible is something that is unvaluable so imagine being 10 year old and start reading the bible daily from that day on there's no greater advice i could give 10 year old paulus and what would you say gloria to uh, the 10 year old gloria i would probably say don't ever give up and don't let anyone's words or opinions or anything they believe don't let their words be your truth because many times people will say something and think something, but it's not the truth. So we can't believe what everybody say, mm. says. And that's something I would tell myself to don't, don't trust in what everybody says. Believe in yourself and don't give up. If you fall, just keep going. Like it's not the end of the world mm. if you fall. But one thing I would also tell myself is to enjoy mm. every moment. Don't focus on on what's coming next or only think about the next part of your life okay and when you're a teenager you think about a lot of in my case I thought about a marriage well, who am I gonna marry what am I gonna do and now when I am married we're thinking about the next part when are we gonna have children and when we have children we're gonna think about the next part so we people us people we are very bad at enjoying the moment enjoying right now mm. so that's something i would tell myself to just enjoy every season you're in when you're 10 enjoy when you're 10 when you're 20 enjoy when you're 20 and when you're 30 and 40 enjoy every moment because if we live our lives only dreaming of what's coming we're gonna miss the now mm. we also received a lot of questions from you that we haven't been able to answer this video and that's because some of them requires longer answers and uh, for example a lot of you wants us to share our testimonies how we became believers in jesus christ and we will probably share another video about that where we share our faith and how we became the ones we are today and i've also received the questions regarding our youtube channel our youtube name how we started and our channel's name is noah doxanning in english it means grace and truth and we received that uh, name for our channel from the bible in uh, john chapter 1 it says that jesus was full of grace and truth but we'll speak more ab about our journey of how we started our youtube channel and the challenges we we had to face before we found the courage to stand here and just record our thoughts and feelings and everything that gets to our minds. Thank you guys for watching this video, we really appreciate it. And as we said before, don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment, and even share this video with your friends and families if you appreciate it. Don't forget that you are loved and not for what you do, but for who you are. We love you guys. Thank you for all the love that you share with us and all the messages and all the comments. And we'll see you in the next video. God bless you.